Welcome to Voices of Women. I'm Chris Stainis, your host, and I'm also the founder of Women of Wisdom Foundation. We are putting on our 29th annual conference in 2021. It is March 11th through the 14th, and for the very first time, it is virtually online, which means anyone around the world can join us, which is so exciting. Our theme this year is celebrating the spirit of women, united we are one. And today, well, also I want to say our, our website where you can look at everything, our whole schedule is at womenofwisdom.org. I've been interviewing our presenters, and today I have Jan Jorgensen. She is giving a workshop on um, Sunday morning on the Divine Feminine Promise through SOAR, S-O-A-R, Sounding Our Authentic Resonance. So Jan Jorgensen is a Divine Feminine Activator through workshops recordings and books, the SOAR initiative, videos, producing interviews and healing services. I also will say that she is a fabulous artist. I don't think this is on her bio right now. She certi is certified in Avatar, Omnium and studied and taught vibrational healing at the Sound and Consciousness Institute. Widely known for her voice release process that removes fear from speaking, she provides education and inspiration to women. Jan leads sacred tours, provides a forum at SOAR, a voice of truth initiative on Facebook and is writing her third book, Sarah's Voice. She offers, offers private ad group sessions addressing your needs. And so her workshop will be March 14th and we're so excited to have her again. This is, I think your third time at the conference. So, so welcome, Jan. So, gl so glad to be there since I moved up to the Pacific Northwest and said, where is it happening for women? They would always say, Chris at WOW. So I'm thrilled to be um, part of this group and I've met such wonderful women and I've enjoyed uh, coming and presenting at the workshops. And I think this is an exceptional year with the pandemic that we can actually send out those vibrations even further. So that's the silver lining of the mm -hmm. Zoom. Yes, I mean, we're known for, we've never done webinars online. We're known for being in person and that power of being in person and sitting in a circle. But there's an extra added gift for uh, being on Zoom where we can join with so many women who haven't been able to travel to Seattle. So that's what makes it exciting. And it's the quantum field. And so as we're, of course, we understand that the energy is still there. But I miss sitting around a mother tree, sounding and <laughs> touching the ground. But it's just a blink. I know that we'll be able to do that in just a blink. Yeah, we're all waiting. Well, you've given workshops on uh, intentional creativity, painting, and then voice release. And now you're doing this workshop on SOAR. So tell us about SOAR. Uh, what is it and how did it come to you? Well, the painting and the voice release are uh, just specialties, but SOAR is an umbrella. And when I first had my, I guess, spiritual awakening, I was like 54 years old and spirit came and tapped me in the shoulder and said, you're in the wrong movie. You're supposed to be a leader of the divine feminine. And I said, what is that? So maybe 15 years later now, um, I've been developing, it's an umbrella, and it is about women, women stepping forward and sounding their authenticity and their resonance without fear. But I realized, okay, so women are in their homes, they're still with their partners, they're still living somewhat of an isolated life of spiritually awakening at home with their regular community. And spirit showed me that we are like little beams of light happening all over the globe and that it helps us. Um, we're confused at first. I was confused. I didn't even know what energy was. I'm 54 and I saw this psychic. He said, you'll be running energy on a stage and showing other people how. And I thought, what am I going to be plugging in toasters? <laughs> I mean, I had no idea. So uh, women need support. So SOAR is, it's a, it's a template for how we can get women out of confusion, helping them understand that they are messengers here, that the way they've lived in a fear-based reality is something that they can actually heal from 
and work with their core essence and begin speaking truth and begin lifting up their own family, their community, and eventually becoming stellar leaders. And then that we do that better in circles as women. So SOAR is about getting in your own circle of support. And now it's through Zoom, which is easy. And it's something that I actively do. I find I, women clients, I do weekly meditations and I can tell who's just, just not sure who she is or what her job is. And I have her come and at the end of the meditation, I'll say, you know, I think you two might have some resonance, send their emails. It, it's unbelievable how these women are feeling and their growth potential when they're with their kindred spirits, like-minded soul. So number one source about just what you do with your watering hole and your circles and gather the women, get us into supportive circles so we can sense of our role as emerging leaders in this air driven dissolving, dissipating world. We are the transition agents. If we sound our authentic divine resonance, not what we've been patterned and programmed to do. So first get in a circle of support and I give templates for that. And for years I had workshops in Marin and I led tours to France and we would gather women and we would work to develop our, to release the fear out of our voice and develop uh, alignment tools so that no matter what was happening, we could stay solid and balanced. So we, we did that in groups and now it's over Zoom. And secondly, and this is the part that has come to my attention, it's so timely this year, in the near future, it appears that through vaccinations and different things that we won't really uh, be living in the same world pre-pandemic and that we might want to know that there is the place on the grid in the world where we can visit in a physical home with like-minded resourceful highly resonant people so the second part of SOAR is creating a directory of people with an extra bedroom with a retreat center here we have 11 acre forest. We are developing a guest house for retreats and we're right on the water. And so um, it's multi level, but the idea is to get women in circle, figure out where they live, and have a safe, wonderful place to go to. But once you go there, that's where the beauty is. I consider myself an ambassador. You are an ambassador of specific original um, elements that are your gifts. So say for instance, um, I want to go visit uh, Trista's Skyhawk, uh, Skyhawk property in, in New York and she has a retreat center. I would go as an ambassador and I would teach voice release and how to have the voice of leadership. Then she will come and visit my center and I'll gather up my troops and she can teach sustainable living in nature. The three tenets of ambassadorship are leadership arts, creative arts, and uh, healing arts. And the third is sustainable living. So if we galvanize that we are masters and experts and teachers and ambassadors, we can go to these retreat centers until we've cross-pollinated within like, like off the third dimensional, off the regular uh, beaten path and, and connect with each other, we're gonna have created a beautiful interwoven, highly vibrational new paradigm ready grid of awakened souls. That's the source story. Well, that, that's great. And it's so much in alignment too of, of women of wisdom. You know, we're based on meeting in circle and, and the whole concepts of, of everyone's voice matters and everyone is part of the process. And it is um, that support and witnessing each other in our stories, so important to be sharing our stories. And, and so, and I know I've, I've seen your diagram, it's very similar to the diagram I made for Women of Wisdom of circles within circles and the inter the inter um, connection interconnections between 
um, people. And within that, and I know in your diagram too, there is a center circle that joins us all together. And so, you know, it's, it's out there, this consciousness of this is out there in the world. I, it came to me in a meditation, just like it's came to you, came to you. Uh, for me, it's way back, I don't know, I think it was 2002, because I was looking for a different kind of leadership for myself, you know, I didn't want to be the sole leader. So, um, so this is so, yeah, and you have a, that, um, what do you call that? That's like a... Uh, this is the kind of like, this is you, this is me, I call it the Christmas tree light uh, a theory of us beings holding our own node of our mastery and taking responsibility for it courageously and the earth is in here and we're creating a whole new grid of information light and of self-empowerment right here that's great so you talked about this being a, a new paradigm model um and I, I know we're all we're all kind of looking for that like what is the next step of leadership and it really is connecting with other women in particular to strengthen our voices. That's one of the things you work with, with voice resonance and to, uh, to understand the power of our voices and being in these circles or these sore groups is a way to practice that and to empower each other. And it, it sometimes does take practice so you feel comfortable and you feel safe. Mm -hmm. So this is done in a safe environment, which is yeah. part of that circular structure of, yeah. of having built in your container of safety for women to share. And, and I know, and even in myself, it's helped me um, not censor my voice so much, you know, whereas before you, you know, when I was younger, worrying about what I say would be accepted when people listen. And as you've had practice in circles and feel empowered by others and feel supported and you've been witnessed, um, that voice is less censored. You, you, you know, when I get a nudge, I know I'm supposed to say something, sort of this internal nudge. And invariably somebody will say, oh, I'm so glad you said that. So it's not for me. If I'm holding it inside myself, I now consider that to be rather selfish because it's really speaking for others. Yeah. And once, um, once you set that sacred space and everyone drops in and fear melts away, I call it the unguarded uh, space. There's nothing to guard or defend, undefended mm. space where every woman feels respected and held and we trust each other. And in fact, if the circle is this, I step forward and I do my magic and then I go back in this circle and the next right. woman comes forward. It's so opposite of the power uh, from top down, uh -huh. domination and control, which of course are voices of truth and the success of the energy that we bring forth, the true essence of how Earth was designed to be more in balance, that we're dissembling. Actually, it, because we are waking up, we're actually the ones causing the dissolution and the tsunamis over the old fear-driven uh, beings and milieus. So that's the good news. So don't get too distressed that things are falling apart. They, they're they supposed to. Yeah, and it's about exposure. It has to be exposed in, in order for the change to come. And I think we're all sitting on the edge of our chair knowing, you know, change is coming. Um, we kind of want it sooner than, than later. And that doesn't, you know, and there's a process and we're part of the process. And I like what you said about, I've, I've pictured that too, where everyone steps into the center about your expertise. So I step in when this is, you know, my expertise, someone else in the circle steps in when theirs is um, another attribute that they have. And, and then you sit back and, you know, you let others go to the center and, and then step back so that everyone's voice is part of the process and, and honoring the gifts. Cause what you're doing then is honoring the gifts yeah. and we don't all have the same gifts. That's for sure. And that's why we need each other. I, I call people to, to get me out of the limb of the tree. And then I have gifts where I help my friends. And I said, gee, if one of us had all the gifts, what would happen to the rest of us? It's almost like a touch team. And some of the sisters who still have, you know, maybe a little addiction in this or a little, uh, you know, physical problem, we can count on each other. And that's how we truly can learn to trust. It's a, not one of us is going to inherit the earth. This is going towards a unity, oneness, which is 
feminine. And my grandma Alice used to say, oh, the pendulum swings all one way. It can't get more into the toxic masculine control over. So we're bringing it back. And so we need to rise up to the level of awakening to meet what has occurred. And that's why I feel such a rush of passion uh, for the books I wrote. Number one, Guy's Guide to the Divine Feminine. So women don't have to leave their husbands so the guys can actually see. It's big, <laughs> and just a few pages. Just it says, this is what's happening. It, a new lifestyle for her. And you certainly can come along and support. And then the second one was waking up and realizing I was in the wrong movie that I promised to do something and being an orthodontist wife with a little Ferrari in a villa, wasn't it? Maintaining that materialism was not it. So that book was Passion Healed Me. And women say, you're writing about me. That's exactly what happened to me. Now, the third one is Sarah's voice, the rise of the divine feminine. And that really is about this clarion call in a, a leadership, vibrational leadership, because it is the frequencies of our voices in our very being that awakens our sisters. It's, you get what I'm saying? That's what the electromagnetic power is, our voices igniting. In other words, as you and I are talking, you know, I've studied this scientifically computer-wise, your aura is changing all these different colors is my passion and excitement in the back of your throat. Your nasopharynx is doing the exact same movements that I'm doing. We are in training and actually awakening even deeper parts of our contract as sisters hoods before we were born coming in as essentially visitors here as transitional agents. So it is important to get with each other and to keep speaking. And Sarah's voice uses the metaphor, which is really fun, that Christ and Magdalene, imagine if they truly were married and had a child, a daughter, Sarah. Sarah means daughter of the father of life. And this Sarah 2,000 years ago was conceived as these beings of light we're saying, love your brother as yourself. And for 2,000 years, we didn't have the consciousness to hold that potential. But 2,000 years later, Sarah and Mary Magdalene are awakening in women's ideation and visualizations. So the daughter of the perfect blend of masculine and feminine, I'm meeting all these women who think they're Sarah, okay? I've actually gone back in the timeline and I say, you're part of the facetry of the promise for the voice of the feminine to come back in 2000 years and welcome to the team. <laughs> we will help each other and we can, it's just a metaphor. People need stories. Mm -hmm. It's a divine plan, but what if we are these Sarahs? Yeah, and you're not the first to talk about this and I know some people um, think there was a Sarah and uh, and there's books written about that but it is a consciousness and that's a wonderful thing to think about and and also you know we're not just talking about it, it was great for women to get together and strengthen our voices and strengthen our sisterhood and do all that and and become leaders but we're also talking about the feminine that's sitting within men and women Absolutely. and bringing the feminine and the masculine back into balance and it's not a gender thing and so there's that fear of men are going to lose their position of leadership and they're going to lose their power that women are going to take over and that's not what it's about um, it's about to work in partnership and to be together with this and so we're all part of this work and and we need to bring that with love and and distill that fear because that's part of this reaction that's going on in the country right now is that fear and men are losing losing their base losing their power losing and they're they're fighting back and they don't realize the gifts they will get you know because this will be a gift to everybody to men, bring on the feminine. Men's heart of hearts. Uh, it, it Again, it's not gender related. Mm -hmm. Masculine and feminine can be either gender, but uh, the, the masculine of having to control and condense things, um, it, that is dissipating. Again, we talked about that. 
And the true male, the true male within me even loves to provide and protect mm -hmm. and allow the flow of the beauty, the sensuality of life in the feminine. And I want to fund that and I want to protect it. My masculine side wants to do that. Mm -hmm. So that is what has been out of balance. So in, in my book, I say, uh, I teach women to ask for what they need to do their work in a way that allows men to deliver it. And I was told by a spirit to go to Iona, Scotland. And I went there last fall. And that is where there was six layers of bones of matriarchal spiritual uh, ancestors there. And they said, Jan, it's not enough for women to speak truth because they're speaking it with anger. And no. that's pushback and resistance. Uh -huh. You must look at the male, the wounded male, who feels that they're being written out of the script, who needs them, look at them as divine souls who have been limited and they have this resistance and give them a win. Let them give you what you need. And in doing so, you're igniting their heart of hearts to provide and protect. They're a knight, they're a warrior. Let that masculine come out powerfully. And of course, these are Alison Armstrong's has a beautiful program, the PAX programs, where she teaches you very simple ways to ask so that you can receive. And as feminine, that's the flow to receive. So there are many working parts to this. And we teach that in our SOAR program, how to ask for what you need so that there is a disarming of any resistance and in, in charming, being charming and enchanting so that we all win, that we all win together. Mm -hmm. So I imagine you'll be doing exercises and these kinds of things in the workshop for women to get in touch with this. Um, then how did you, because I'm asking all the presenters how your workshop fits in the theme, and I know it's pretty obvious, but celebrating spirit of women, united we are one. Yeah. How do it's you see structure. that? I mean, it's a somewhat of a template of a structure. You feel alone? Okay, let's figure out. Uh, I have little templates for how to reach out in your church or community and have a little script. Would you like to talk with me on Zoom or to teach women how to reach out and get that support? And then how um, to create these safe places to go as the world has about five years of this, you know, debridement of the old stuff. So I'll be presenting templates and some YouTubes and then I believe I have a breakout section. And so people can look and say, how am I doing things now that I really do need more support? Or I would like to open my home for these wonderful ambassadors and bring my community in. So getting their own supportive community and then uh, figuring out how they can facilitate people in their community going to visit other people and then they come in their community, this uh, visitor, visitation. So that's what people, people can imagine doing something new. Like I'll, I'll have like questions where they answer and can journal, go off for a little bit and then break down in sessions, answer questions. And the specifics usually spirit gives to me the night before. And then in the morning, I write it out because if I do from my logic brain, and I have to, you know, going to get it rewritten anyway. So, right. And the feminine way is in process and it can even happen in the moment, in the workshop. You'll get an inspiration and that's how the feminine operates. <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, what would you like to give as a last message to our listeners today to walk away with? Um, to not despair that these times are going to continue is the part in the movie, like even in the, um, in the, uh, the, the Wonder Woman movie, my daughter said, it got so bad, and then it got badder, and then it got worse, sir, that you think, how is this ever going to flip around? This, of course, is the zigzag, the spiral getting tight and then expanding. What is coming is so glorious this reclamation of the correct vibrational patterning on earth, it is worth it. Stay aligned, stay vibrant, stay in communication with things that make your heart sing with mm -hmm. other people, dance, sing, 
and and know that you can't fix something that's not meant to be fixed. Just glow. And then other people will say, I want what she's drinking. And then you tell them what you're doing. Okay. We're mentors in that way. Right. We're not to try to, we just glow and our presence gives the opportunity for a greater reality. But if we're over here despairing and depressed and kind of, then that's not our role right now. Yeah, so stand out, shine your light, and, and be, don't be afraid to be visible. We, we do need to get rid of our, our, our fears of being visible. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today, Jan. You are welcome, Chris. That was lovely. Love and, to be part of this organization. Thank you. Yeah, and we look forward to having you at the conference. Would you please give your website so people can find out more about you? Um, you can find out all the different things at Sound and Light Healing arts.com sound and light healing arts.com now for the more active part facebook i have a group there it's called soar voice of truth initiative and we have conversations i still do live events every few months and i have a newsletter and every wednesday morning i do a free meditation and that's where you can come and talk to other people afterwards and meet people and you can find that on my website too, on the first page. Okay, great. And so probably if you do a search for SOAR, S-O-A-R on Facebook, it probably would show up. Okay, and also check out the Woman of Wisdom website for all the offerings we're doing March 11th through the 14th, our early bird special. Uh, it's a great price to register by January 31st and seniors, teens and young, young women 20 to 29 also have a special price. So this is Christina, your host at Voices of Women, and I'll be back interviewing some more WOW presenters in the, this week and next week. Thank you so much.